Is this electric vehicle charging point indestructible? This is the new Hypervolt Home 3 Pro and they've changed loads of stuff. New LEDs, new internals, and this really caught my eye, IP66 and impact rated. Interesting. So today we're gonna to install this new charger and show off all the new features. But watch to the end of the video where we risk all of our footage with the ultimate durability test. Let's get into the job. So we're not gonna teach you how to suck eggs in this video because we've done a million installs of Hypervolts and other EV chargers over the years. What we are gonna do is show off some of the new features that actually will help make our lives easier as installers, make it quicker to install, because there's some really nice new points on this charger. So this is the box, very generic looking, right? However, they are designing brand new packaging, which looks really beautiful. We've got the early access model, which is just in a basic box. It's designed so that you take out the part that you need to install first. So it's in a really logical order, which is good for installers. So the first thing that I've noticed about this new casing is this, the injection molded case, it looks superb quality, definitely an upgrade from the previous one. But what I love about it is there's no ribbon cable anymore. You've got these little pins which line up there and make contact for the LEDs in the cover. So you can literally remove the cover and you've got no ribbon cable to mess around with. And it also means that it's basically a simple customer job to actually change the cover. So if they wanted to change the color in the future, or if it did get damaged or something, it's easy to swap out. So one of the things I love about Hypervolt is they take on board installers feedback. And when I had early access to this a few weeks ago, uh, I said it would be really great if we had captive screws. So right now, these, they come out, so you have to sort of remove them and put them somewhere safe. Otherwise, they might fall out like that, and it's just so annoying if you lose a screw. So I've asked them to make the screws captive, which I think would be an improvement. And they said that they're actually retooling now at a large cost, just to include that change that I've asked them to make, which is pretty awesome. So this is massively improved. You might remember when I did the first Hypervolt video at my house, it had the Raspberry Pi in it and it was really crammed full of stuff. So there was hardly any space. Now they've really redesigned the internals and the electronics. They've gone with their own proprietary chips and stuff, which means that there's much more space. And it means that here there's space for rear entry and you've got much more space to get your cables in. Also another little addition, which I really like is there's now two sets of plugs for CT clamps, which means in future, you'll be able to connect a CT for the grid and a CT for solar or generation. There's still a hardwired ethernet port, which I love. It's so important to be able to have ethernet connectivity if possible. So just for this install, we're using the 10 meter tethered cable. It does come in options of five meter, seven and a half or 10. So Luke's up in the loft. He's gonna be bringing the cable through. We're gonna come in this corner here next to the camera. The reason being we've got an access hatch already to bring the cable down along and into the charger. And this is a really nice change. So the previous version of the Hypervolt didn't have a wall bracket like this. It was just screwed through the back of the casing. Uh, this makes it much quicker and easier to install and it's more flexible. So it's definitely gonna save time for installers. Also what you'll notice about this, there's a hole now for rear entry, which a lot of installers were asking for. So you can drill that out, take the cable into the back of the charger and with the bracket, it lines up and you've got a hole there to take the cable through the back of the bracket. Before, I must admit, it was a little bit faffy trying to get all the screws lined up and stuff and things tended to warp a little bit and it was difficult to get the casing perfect, but this is absolutely brilliant. It just literally slots in, boom, done. And it's super solid. And it literally just needs one retaining screw at the top to hold the thing to the wall. It's absolutely rock solid. So in the box, you've got the redesigned holster, which looks really interesting. You've got your CT clamp, which is for the grid connection. So we'll give that to Luke. And then here are the screws. So this is the main retaining screw that goes in the top of the charger. And then these four are to hold the front cover on. And this is for your wiring for your CT. So Luke's taken this board down and got a rod down. However, I think he's struggling to get the cable through under the floorboard. So let's see how they're getting on. Right, so we tried, yeah, I like tried running underneath. Um, it's just not possible. All the joists that go all the different directions without me ripping up these whole boards, which could take some time. I'm just gonna do the up and over approach. So I'm just gonna clip it up along this joist, back down the other side and straight out that side. So 
installing EV Ultra cable today and I'm using this 25mm stuffing gland. Right Luke, what can I do to help? We're going to go up and over this one, All so right. just clip along every three or four hundred. Oh, I'll just put the clips in and then, yeah, yeah and of then course. I'll yeah, okay. Oh, look at all the slack on those. That's what I said. Oh my goodness, that yeah, is crazy. And they're just completely loose. So these are the main power tails into the property and they've just been slung in by the DNO, the, uh, this, you know, this distribution network operator. But they're completely loose and there's a whole couple of meters loop slack. How they get away with this stuff, I don't know. I mean, we could just put it in like this one. Yeah. Just as the eagle, is it eagle flies or the crow flies? Yeah, less volt drop, isn't it? You know, it um, saves money for the customer on cable. <laughs> oh. Look, see, it's just that little wooden ledge. Yeah. That's it, Cole. Yeah. Take my cable for a walk. Is that it? Okay, that'll do. So we're just doing the earth continuity test, R1 and R2. I'm linking it out here and they're testing it at the other end. Our lease is rocked up. Better late than never. Yeah. Ah, this is so loud. Luke's on the other end of this. Looking like, what's it, Merv out of Home Alone. <laughs> So, I've got my CT connections in here. I've coiled up the extra uh, data wiring just so that if we wanted to do hardwired ethernet later on, we can put an RJ45 plug on the end of that and plug that in there. And then this is the power cable, of four mil, um, high tough basically, going into those terminals. It's important to set this dial to the correct number. Six is for a 60 amp main fuse, seven is for the 80 amp main fuse, and eight is for 100 amp main fuse. So we're just gonna dial it up to eight for a 100 amp main fuse. That protects the main fuse and ramps the charger down if the house is using too much power. This is where it really comes into its own. Simple as that. Okay, so I've just finished now, got the power back on, haven't actually turned it on in the house yet, so we're just gonna do an RCD test on the board I've installed. So that's our board, just follow the tails around and put them into the existing Henley block. Um, it's a bit of a sort of a jumble in there, we've managed to squeeze in the best we can um, without taking everything off, basically, and starting again. Yeah, just gonna do the RCD test and then we'll get the char car charger on and do some tests on that. So we've come to the point of commissioning now, it's all livened up, the blue light glowing away, it looks really nice and bright. And we've got the Hypervolt installer app, which is also a fairly new addition to the Hypervolt ecosystem. And that is much easier to commission these chargers with for us installers. So I select the charger, which appears immediately, and then it's gonna connect via Bluetooth. It's adopted it. So I'm just gonna connect now to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so we're connected to the Wi-Fi. We've got an IP address and everything. We've run our electrical tests. We go to next and we put the client details in here, and then that will send him an invitation to take over the charger from us. So once we've done our tests, we click finish installation and that's it. And it'll hand it over to the customer now. And there's some really interesting updates with the customer app. So I'll show you some of those. One of the things is the settings with plug and charge and also scheduling. So plug and charge means you plug it in and it starts charging straight away. Schedule charge means you can set a schedule and you can do as many sessions as you want. Then charging modes, boost mode is standard if you don't have solar panels, eco or super eco if you do have solar. Up here in the top right, you click the lock button and it locks it, which means that nobody else can use it. In the energy usage tab, you can see how many pounds or how many kilowatt hours you've used. You can set your energy tariff settings in the settings page. And then in analytics, you can generate reports about how much you've used over a certain time. In the settings page, you can set the LED brightness all the way from 100% down to zero. And in LED modes, you can choose various modes depending on your mood. For installers, the maximum current limit is available as well. So if the customer did want to ramp it down slightly, they can do that themselves. This newly designed holster is a massive improvement because it's angled down further. Before the holster was like that, the cable sticked out more. Now it's really nice and flush to the wall. 
There's a lot of new features, but instead of me telling you about it, let me show you. So today we filmed a video and we're really gonna put the IP66 rating to the test. I'm gonna take this footage out of the camera that we filmed on this job today and we're gonna put it inside the car charger. But just to prove to you that this is the SD card. Is this the indestructible electric vehicle charging point? So, risk it for a biscuit, right? If this product is not good enough, if it doesn't really match up to what they say, which is IP66 and IK10, we're gonna find out. Let's put it to the test. Right, this is it. I'm gonna draw a little love heart on it. I'm gonna tape it inside here. Now it's time to prove whether this really is an indestructible charger. So IP66 means it's protected against water jets from things like a pressure washer. The first six is actually dust protection, so it's protected against fine dust. And the second six is protected against powerful water jets with a nozzle of up to 12 and a half millimeters. Hello mate. Hello mate. How much for your full valet? 110 pounds, please. Can you do this? Yes. So the first test is dust. The first six in the IP66 represents ingress of dust, fine powder. We're going to test it with some flour. <laughs> okay. And the next test for the second six in IP66 is high pressure water jets. Feels like it's full of water. Let's check if the SD card's okay. Let's crack it open and see what's inside. This is quite ironic really, because if this doesn't work and we lose the footage, we would lose the video anyway, because Hypervolt would never want to sponsor it if it actually failed the test. Right, so some water's got inside here, but that's actually fine because it's only got the LEDs in, which is all low voltage. The real test is whether it's got inside here. This is it, moment of truth. Oh yes, look at that. Absolutely dry as a bone. Well, that's a relief. The ultimate test is, will the SD card still be okay? I mean, it better be, because it's dry as a bone in there, but let's check. Oh yes. We saved the video, but there's one more test to do. Talking of car washes, it gave me an idea. If we get 10,000 likes on this video, we'll do an artisan car wash calendar and donate all the proceeds to charity. So hit a thumbs up. So the other new feature of this that they've massively upgraded is the quality of the plastics. There was a few problems with colour fading over time. That's not the case now because they've made it of super high quality uh, injection moulded plastic. Extremely high quality. Plastic nerds will love it. But the other thing is it's impact resistant. IK10 is the term. So let's put that to the test. I think we've pretty much proved that this is a tough charger. Indestructible, we're gonna find out in a minute. But if you've enjoyed this video and you wanna find out more about the Hypervolt, there is a link in the description below. And why not settle in and watch a couple more of our videos after this? There'll be a couple of cards on screen where you can find videos that YouTube thinks you will enjoy. But I know you all want to see me smash this thing, so let's do it. Indestructible? Maybe not quite, but they never claimed that it was, but it's close. We've given that a hammering, and to be honest, the internals are absolutely fine. And for 50 quid, you can buy a new cover and change it if you do crash your car into it. But I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like and subscribe if you do for more great content, and we'll see you on the next one.